हेलो लर्नर्स आई एम डॉक्टर आनंद वर्धन अ फैकल्टी एट स्कूल ऑफ हेरिटेज रिसर्च एंड मैनेजमेंट अंबेडकर यूनिवर्सिटी दिल्ली वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडे द हिस्ट्री एंड सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ ट्राइब्स एंड देयर आइडेंटिटी फ्रेंड्स द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस particular topic of discussion is to make you aware of the following things what is identity i mean what forms identity of a particular community the second objective is what are the dynamics of identity formation i mean on what basis identity of a particular community is formed third objective is the appreciation of differences in every community you find there are some different traits of activities that form their identity so we are supposed to appreciate the differences in cultural outlook of the two different communities next objective is respect for others sense of identity i mean to say that india being a multilingual multicultural multi ethnic society has different social groups and we must have respect and a sense of appreciation for all those communities of india as well as world and the last objective is all about learning to handle the complications arising out of identity differences so how an academician a scholar should understand in totality the significance of cultural identities friends our understanding and notions of others affect our every day interaction with people at all levels a sense of the self and of the other based on national linguistic religious tribal or family identities is of great importance in the field of tourism a profession which deals with people rather than machines or abstract ideas friends i want to explain that how cultural identities play important role in developing a comprehensive approach about a country and a place in respect to tourist having proper understanding of cultural communities is always significant we take our identities our selves of the self for granted we know where we can come from what language we speak what are our customs in other words all our social actions stem from our ability to know ourselves in relation to others however this apparent simplicity of identity can lead to enormous complications historical magnitude in many ways one of history's major contradictions or propelling forces have been the fight for identity i mean to say cultural identity in the whole world is a contested terrain there is a struggle for forming identities there is much of debate and discourse on cultural identity we witness all the conflicts between different religious groups linguistic groups and even caste groups in india extended to the world this problem is compounded the sense of identity is also an extremely sensitive issue in respect to india caste and community identities 
are very very sensitive it is this sensitivity we must so in our dealings with people of different regions in our country and with visitors to our country this is what is important for anyone involved in the field of tourism a tourist visits from one place to another one region to another one nook and corner to another nook and corner and in this way he is bound to face various communities and in this respect what is expected is what kind of behavior he is going to offer to others before going in details about different communities of our country we must understand what is a tribe etymologically the term tribe derives its origin from roman word tribus meaning three divisions in the western world as also in india the term tribe had a totally different connotation then what is prevalent now i mean to say when india was in its colonial phase the word tribe was used in a very critical sense the tribe was the highest political unit comprising several districts which in turn was composed of different cla clans in our history it occupied a definite geographical area and exercise effective control over its people it is believed that india derives its name bharat from the mighty bharat tribe itself with the growth of nationalism in europe the term tribe came to denote a race of people within a given territory western writers on india generally known as orientalist followed by some anthropologists and sociologists in india now use the term tribe in the same sense or with the same connotation we in ancient time used a word artvik for example for the people who were living in forest area the popular name used for tribals in india are vanyajati vanvasi pahadi adivasi anusuchit janjati and so on and these are being used in different sense when is we say vanyajati it means caste living in forest region vanvasi inhabitants of forest pahadi are hill dwellers adivasi are the first settlers of the lands and anusuchit jati is basically a constitutional term that denotes to scheduled tribes in our country we should understand what is tribal culture an important question which follows what exactly are the criteria for considering a human group as a tribe interestingly but sadly anthropologists sociologists social workers administrators and such other people who have been involved in the tribes and their problems are still not on the same wavelength on this matter lucy mayer calls it an independent political division of a population with a common culture this definition is not acceptable to others g w b hunting regards it as a group united by a common name in which the members take pride by a common language by a common territory and by as feeling that also that all who do not share this name are outsiders some western writers even regard them as an ethnic group geographically isolated 
or semi isolated identified with one particular territory and having distinct social economic and cultural traditions and practices. However, by far the most accepted definition in the Indian context has been offered by D. N. Mazumdar. According to Dr. Mazumdar, a tribe is a social group with territorial affiliation, endogamous with no specialization of function, ruled by tribal affairs, hereditary or otherwise united in language or dialect recognizing social distances with other tribes or castes without any social obloquy attaching to them as it does in the caste structures following tribal traditions, beliefs and customs, liberal or naturalization of ideas from alien sources, above all conscious of homogeneity of ethnic and territorial integration is the core idea in formation of a tribe. Another very important problem is what should be the criteria and indices of tribal life, identities of tribal life. Scholars differ in their opinion in this regard as well. In the Indian context, the best model is offered by T. B. Nayak. According to him, a tribe to be a tribe should have the least functional independence within the community. It should be economically backward which means the full impact of monetary economy should not be understood by its members. Primitive means of exploiting natural resources should be used. The tribe's economy should be at an underdeveloped stage. Apart from that, it should have multifarious economic pursuits. There should be a comparative geographic isolation of its people from others and culturally members of a tribe should have a common dialect which may be subject to regional variations. A tribe should be politically organized and its community panchayat should be an influential institution. The tribe's members should have the least desire to change. They should have a sort of psychological conservatism making them stick to their old customs. This is very significant element of a tribal society that they do not want to change their old cultural traits. A tribe generally has customary laws and system of dispensing justice. So, these are some of the very significant issues which have been quoted here. Friends, if we have to summarize or encapsulate this idea, we can say a tribe means a community living within a specific geographical area or a group of people that, for, that follow some self-developed customary laws and they have their own economic system. We have to understand what is identity, what are the markers of identity, how do we understand the concept of identity. There are several broad categories which are used normally in social science and literature. We speak of cultural identities, political identities, linguistic identities, gender identities, ethnic identities, individual identities, professional identities, etc. These will be briefly explained further in this session.
section. There is group markings within which an individual normally defines himself can do change over different historical periods or as societies evolve in relation to each other. For example, the industrial revolution in England changed the way people identified themselves earlier to industrial revolution. From being farmers, yeomen or serfs and nobility, modern England created the worker, the industrialist and other professional identities. It has happened in India in long course of its historical experience as a cultural nation. Similarly, 200 years of English colonialism created a modern Indian identity quite separate from its traditional variants. When cultures comes in contact with each other, they also come in contact with different value system and a different way of viewing the world. This implies the above all identity is not unchangeable. Identity formation must be viewed as a dynamic process which changes with historical changes. I mean to say, in the long course of colonial rule, castes which worked as industrial units in Indian society, their identities somehow changed after colonial rule and a modern system of economic production. One significant way in which identity formation underwent change historically was in the relationship between the individual and the society. In traditional pre-industrial society, it was the community whether based on caste, religion or any other identity which formed the basic unit of identity in society. A person was known primarily by his membership of the community and he belonged to that. Individual identity did not acquire a position of centrality. But the modern industrialized world has led to the creation of an atomized society where the individuals constitute the basic units of identity through other forms of identities. Another important aspect of understanding identity is relational. One is aware of one's identity only in relationship to others. This operates at all levels of identity, be it national or individual. For example, Indian identity exists only in relation to British or French or some other national identities. Similarly, religion's identity exists mainly in relation to each other. Identity is therefore not just a simple sense of the self. A study of identity formation means examining the different processes through which this sense of self is arrived at and how it manifests itself. Thus we have, we may take the following as a working definition. By identity we mean a general consensus based on commonly accepted social custom, taboos and ways of life that bind together and mark groups of people and individuals therein. We will discuss now types of identities. In social science researches, discussion on types of identity is very important to complete our picture of what is identity. Other aspects of identity need to be explored. This is the multi-layered nature of identity. Each individual is a sum total of the many layers of his identity. Sometimes the different layers can come in conflict with each other. 
and at other times one type may predominate it would be safe to look upon identities as inherent inherited and acquired identities certain identities are inherent in us like those based on gender and ethnicity we inherit certain other like those based on language religion caste and nationality inherited identities are not chosen by us but they are they were chosen by our ancestors we simply inherit them and thus we follow either hinduism islam christianity or many other religions unlike inherent identities it is always possible for us to change them we can change our language religion or nationality apart from these we also acquire certain identities like those related to profession and political associations these are voluntary identities and we choose them let us look briefly upon some of these identities for example national identity our sense of belonging to one nation state with certain common characteristic forms our national identity when we meet a french dutch or chinese person we identify ourselves as indian this ability to call ourselves indian in relation to people of other countries is our national identity thus when we introduce ourselves as indian the other may assume several things about us for example that we come from asia that we speak hindi or some other regional language that we may hindustani and vegetarian these are then our national markers by which other national identifiers religious and ethnic identity is equally significant the system of religious beliefs with its accompanying norms and values its customs and taboos forms our religious identity members of a religion are tied together through a common set of beliefs social practices rituals and even superstitions you may have seen people belong to different communities following different sets of rituals and celebrating different types of festivals sometimes in multi religious societies different religious identities can be a source of clash and conflict although the power of religion has declined with the onset of industrialization the religious identity continues to contend with other forms of modern identities for the allegiance of the people closely related to religious identity is ethnic identity friends ethnicity is a broad form and may be defined as an identity related to races on large number of people grouped together based on common traits and customs the kurds in iraq or red indians in america can be called ethnic groups the relationship between religious and ethnic identity is complex and overlapping though by and large they coincide with each other but not always an indian muslim or a black muslim or an indian christian and a white christian belong to same religious group but their ethnic identities are different similarly followers of different religions may be a part of the same ethnic stock in modern world it is a very crucial subject of discussion that how gender identity matters in human life friends gender identity is based fundamentally on biological difference differences but historically issues of labor morality and value system have also become crucial in assigning roles to the gender groups in the society apart from our individual identity we also carry with us a sense of our 
being male or female it is important to remember that gender identity is not just a biological one but it has also been shaped by social and historical conditions for example a modern indian woman today has greater freedom than she enjoyed in traditional times family identity is another important issue so far we discuss and focused on identity based on gender territory and ethnicity it is time now to move from larger to a smaller level identity family identity is a personal identity which is formed within the family unit one surname is not the only thing one inherits from the family we also inherit value system and cultural habits from one particular family similarly professional identity is also important in modern world when we chose our disciplines of study or the manners in which we are going to support ourselves in life we are essentially choosing ourselves one or the other identity in this respect individual identity is also important despite the fact that each individual's identity is made of different layers as explained above each one of us also carries a sense of oneself as individual the individuality determines our personalities and identity identifies us by our distinct character portraits it is often the individual identity which faces the most conflicts in relation to other social identities let us sum up we have multiple social groups in our country they have their customs and traditions they have different means of occupation and livelihood their enduring traditions form their identities the beauty of india lies in the fact that we are a multicultural nation with thousands of social groups thank you very much